What's up, homies? Welcome back to a review from Heroes Reforged. You can stop asking now. It's our review of Justice League, 2021 edition, the Snyder Cut. We put put off time to watch it with our patrons, which was really, really fun, minus some of the tech problems that we had. But we had a really fun time watching that. That's why we waited to put out this review. We could have done it the first night it came out, but, you know, we we made a promise to our patrons we'd watch it with them. If you have not checked out our Patreon, we have uncut reactions for a lot of the shows that we're watching. Superman and Lois, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, WandaVision. There will also be an uncut reaction to uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League. So if you're interested in that, check that out. Go down in the description. Check out our Patreon.com slash Heroes Reforged. But let's talk about this movie. I know that we've had other movies that have kind of gone through this process of getting a director's cut or a new cut. But this was like a really big, big movie. We didn't. I didn't really know what to expect from it. I didn't really know how different it would be from the theatrical cut. With this one, I was like, okay, it's four hours long. So for me, going into it, I was like, this is pretty much going to be a really uh, 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 an assembly cut with a beauty pass over it, which it really was. I mean, you know, like this is not a movie that I don't think we would have ever seen in theaters, unless maybe years down the line we got an extended cut for it. But so right. going into it, I was like, you know, I'm really open to whatever the movie is. I'm not really going to be worried about the runtime. My biggest thing going into any movie is story and character. There are some things in this movie that worked for me in terms of the story. I mean, there's also a lot of stuff that just didn't work for me. Um, mm -hmm. But overall, I was never bored. I think the advantage that that I felt was because I was watching with you guys, I never had an opportunity to be bored because we were, right. we'd watch it, right. we'd talk a little bit about it. If there was no real like dialogue happening, we could kind of mm -hmm. digest what was going on and, and reflect on it. So I never was bored. Yeah. And I found yeah. the visual look of the movie, just like with anything that he's done, uh, to actually be like really engaging. There's a lot of really good visual storytelling happening. And I've always said that I thought Zack Snyder is an exceptional cinematographer. You know, he came from the world of, of commercials and he brought a lot of that cinematography with him. There are things right. about the look of his movies that I'm not insanely fond of, like the color tones. I'm not super crazy about those. I would love, right. I would have loved it if by the end of the movie went spoiler flash turns back time. Some of those colors would have become maybe a little bit more vibrant. I think for me, like the Joss Whedon version of the movie too vibrant. I think there's like a happy medium where you can have yeah. a little bit more, but not too much. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in terms, in terms of the movie itself, I definitely I, I don't think there's you're going to find a person on the Internet who's like this movie was worse than the than the theatrical cut. Am I crazy? Right. Am I wrong? No, I, yeah. I think that you're going to find people who I just know people that are going to be able to point to the theatrical cut and go, oh, OK, I know why they made that decision. Yeah. And either I can agree with it or at least I can understand why they made that decision. One of the biggest mm -hmm. ones I saw people talking about this past weekend is like in the Zack Snyder's Justice League version the gang gets together. They're talking about a mother box. That's a kind of round table discussion. And then all of a sudden flash is like, okay, I know we're all thinking it. I'm not going to say it. We should bring him back to life. And in the theatrical cut, there is a, an, an, an attempt to have Diana and Bruce Wayne, like debate about the ethics the of that a little bit. And, ethics, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And some people were yeah. saying like, Hey, I appreciated that in the theatrical version. Right. So I've also, I've also seen people say when comparing both of these that like, that kind of maybe the best possible version of a Justice League movie might be some kind of Frankenstein of them both. In, and that includes running time. That includes some of the, 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 the color grading that you were talking about, Adam, right? They're talking about that happy medium. Some of the extra things that were added to the theatrical cut to try to like explain some stuff, but also definitely not everything that was added to the theatrical cut. Like the Russian family was awful. Like, you know, I think yeah. there's a lot of, there's a, I, I was seeing a lot of a sort of a unanimous agreement about stuff that was working in this one that didn't work in the theatrical or vice versa or whatever. Mm -hmm. So rewatching justice league, I was watching it with my roommates and, and one of my roommates was like, wait, these characters are all of a sudden a team. Now it doesn't feel like it's earned. When we right. watch the Zack Snyder's justice league, it really does take its time to build that up and things and, and characters locking into place made more sense, especially when it came to Cyborg, especially mm -hmm. when it came to Flash. Yes. So like my roommates and I appreciated that. I think we appreciated that while we were watching the film. I think that when it comes down to this movie, there's a couple of questions that you can answer. The first one is, is it better than the theatrical cut? I think we all of us would say yes. I would say yes. I Secondly, say yes. is it is it good as a movie on its own? And it's like, the answer to that is it's not a movie on its own. It is a movie that exists after five years of people asking for it, five years of of us living with this other version of the film, and mm -hmm, like Aquaman mm -hmm. and Shazam and Birds and like, of Prey coming out after yeah. it. 
it's not a movie on its own. I don't. I couldn't recommend it on a mo- as a movie on its own, especially not to somebody who's not already invested in these movies or these characters. I'm not going to like tell my dad to just go check it out mm-hmm. because he will be confused. We I all mean, saw the opening Leslie- of the movie recaps what happened in Batman versus Superman. And you're like, wait, Superman's dead? What happened? <laughs> yes, right, right. We all saw uh, a hilarious comedian Leslie Jones watching it, mm-hmm. and I felt like she had a really funny and like honest. <laughs> yeah. You know, she loved what Take she loved, but she was it. also yeah. asking questions. She's like, wait, Who wasn't that? this was this guy? <laughs> Yeah. dead in this and you know yeah. Yeah. or when at the end when dark sides in the in the boom tube she's like come through though come through <laughs> come through thanos cousin you know yeah thanos is cousin it's great i loved it it's, it's like thanos is cousin come on so funny so yeah. like yeah. um I, I, those kinds of questions it's like it, it's going to depend on a person by person basis totally. and i will also echo the last thing i'll say is i'll echo the sentiments that everybody on the internet has been saying which is if you are already a fan of this director and his take on dc superhero movies you're gonna love this movie if not this is not gonna be the one to change your mind i did not have my mind changed but i definitely appreciated it's my favorite movie of Zack snyder's that he's dealing with dc superheroes up to this point and i was Mm -hmm. saying while we were watching it that like some of the stuff towards the end towards that last battle with with the way that that Cyborg and Flash especially really pop as characters. Like I would have loved some of that heroism implanted in his, in his vision earlier. And and even with the things that Superman's doing, once he gets the black suit on and he's hearing the voiceover, like, like um, uh, Jonathan Kent is saying stuff like fly son. And I'm like, he never said that in man of steel. he never said, you know, these kinds of things where I'm like, I would have loved more of, Whatever Zack Snyder was thinking about these characters when he was doing Justice League and like wrapping up this version, I would have loved it if he thought that same thing earlier. And I felt like he didn't just because of the steps that he took for his story. Okay, I'm going to have Batman and Superman try to kill each other. And, you know, those kinds of fundamental groundwork things that I'm like, I really appreciate some of the stuff in Justice League. Mm -hmm. Would have loved to have seen some of that hope and optimism earlier and people that can disagree and they go, the Man of Steel is super hopeful. And I would just say, not for me. It didn't, it, you mm-hmm. know, those movies were not that superhero thing that you feel. For yeah. me, I wish they were. I think that if there were more Justice League stuff sprinkled in those earlier movies, they would have been. So I will say that. Augustine, what'd you think? I'm going to echo the idea that you guys put forward that this movie is definitely better than the, the theatrical cut. I've always been a fan of visual storytelling. I love Gendy Tartakovsky. Like mm. visual visual storytelling is my jam. So I really appreciated how he took the time to when when the flash wasn't in slow motion, when the flash was going full speed, like full frame rate. I thought it was amazing. And I really appreciated that the flash stepped up at the end to become a pivotal character rather than just like the comedic goofy side character. Overall, the movie I thought was great. One thing that I do uh so my wife isn't a super huge fan of of either Marvel or DC. She's just not a huge fan she's of this stuff. She's very chaotic neutral. She's she's very chaotic neutral. Like she'll rip <laughs> apart a Marvel movie and she'll also rip apart a DC movie. I love movie. watching movies with if, her. If it's if she's calling it out, she's calling it out. Like it's Watching there. Star Wars with her was a real treat. <laughs> right, exactly. Exactly. Because she's like, what is this? Like what are we looking at here? Which gives me an objective view on the audience that is outside of our bubble because mm-hmm. this movie was definitely made by people inside of our bubble and and all these all we're all hardcore fans we're all fans of of this stuff that we love but like Leslie Jones we don't know her complete fandom in, right. in all of this like she clearly isn't a mega big fan because she wasn't spitting facts about the other movies right mm-hmm. so seeing <laughs> people outside of this ring and seeing what they think of it i feel like overall from from what i guess i had multiple people texting me all at the same time while they were watching it they're like what is this i think i've seen this before i don't know exactly what's going on and i kept telling them don't overthink it just watch just watch it just just watch it how it is watch what's presented don't worry about what you've seen before this is supposed to be presented as a kind of a new thing and mm-hmm. as a as a kind of a new thing to go back to what you guys were saying, it's hard for me to tell people that because it's not, but that's how it should kind of be treated, which is really weird. So this movie falls in like this really weird space uh, of like a new old movie, which yeah. is <laughs> weird, right? Movie. Like 
it's a new old movie because the movie has been built up. This this movie came out of a rise of a cry of fandom that we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. That social media accelerated, you know, like there was unfortunate circumstances that brought this forward, but now it became its own beast. Uh, and then, you know, this is happening. And I feel like it was like a one shot deal that, you know, Warner Brothers was going to allow people to have. Mm-hmm. And we got it. And then we saw it. And it's to me, it's just it's. It's a good movie, but it's an odd movie. It's just, I don't know where to categorize this. And I don't know if that'll mm-hmm. ever really go away. Mm-hmm. Um, but at, I, at I no don't point, think it will. The next time I honestly want to see this film is like, if one day I have a kid and I'm showing them these DC, and it's like years from now, years from now, you know, if I'm showing them these movies in this order, I'll show them Man of Steel. I'll show them Batman versus Superman. I'll show them Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, and then get mm-hmm. to Justice League. And I'll probably do the theatrical cut, theatrical cut first, right? Just to be like, let's get this out of the way. And then once we watch it, and they'll have questions, I'll be like, so here's what happened. And then you explain yes. the context a little you have bit. To explain and the then, context, right? You know That's what I mean? Weird. And then yeah, and then and then be like, okay, let's watch the four hour version. And then maybe be like, oh, mm. Dad, I don't even like this stuff. And you're like, shut up and watch this. <laughs> I know how important this movie is for fans, but, and I will absolutely admit that it is a well put together movie. And then it, to me, it's my favorite of this Zack Snyder DC superhero films. I may even like it more than Watchmen. I might have to rewatch Watchmen if we're counting that. Um, but it still works with, like you were saying, Adam, some story stuff that, that doesn't work for me, but it's also like the kind of foundational, the way that we, he's got Wonder Woman in the rated R version in this version throwing a guy and bashing his brains up against the wall. And then right afterwards, the girl being like, can I be like you when I grow up? I'm like, there there feels like there's a disconnect. And I can't wrestle with that. I can't, you know, because it's just how I feel personally. She puts a lot of effort into getting rid of a bomb and then blasts the dude through the wall. (laughs) And I'm like, (laughs) bomb threat (laughs) neutralized. That was like the only thing in that scene in the theatrical cut. That was the only thing that I was like, okay, you cut away. Like we moved on from that. Like you can, you can assume whatever you want, but now that you've like pulled back the curtain and you actually see what happens, you're like, what did you even get rid of the bomb for? Like yeah, you made like, it, well, you know. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, she has Why more control. Why did she throw we, the like, bomb at the that, dude but... and then push the dude out the window? Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, if you're gonna bitch, blow somebody out. out. Yeah, exactly. I don't you know. know. It's yeah. it's stuff like that. I know. I know. We were dogging on the ancient lamentation music. That might be the worst oh, no. thing about the film. It's, it's horrendous. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. It's really distracting <laughs> and it's the overused. first couple times I was totally yeah. fine with it because I'm like, oh, this is different. This is new. And then the Wonder Woman theme plays. I'm like, great. We're like tying all this. And then every time Wonder Woman slow mo's into a shot, ancient lamentation music plays, and I was like, I, I want to blow my brains out. It was I, so I read excessive. an article uh, recently that apparently they counted the minutes, and ten percent of the movie is in slow motion. I like the way Zack Snyder uses slow motion, and I like the way he speed right. ramps shots where it's like regular mm-hmm. pace, fast, then slow, and then back again. When you have a character in this movie who literally relies on speed. When you put Mm -hmm. so much slow motion into the movie before you even introduce that character, Mm -hmm. it kind of Mm -hmm. loses the excitement of experiencing that. So Barry, you know, he goes into this whole thing where he saves Iris, which like, I honestly did not need that scene at all. I know a lot of people were stoked to just have Kiersey Clemens in there as Iris, which I think is really cool. It would have been nice if it was like contextually different, like they already knew each other. It just feels like kind of weird. It felt uh, out of place. It, yeah. it was. Yeah. It was. Listen, it was a beautiful scene, but the internet has also picked up on uh, how it was a little bit creepy. And you got to be careful if you're going to be doing that stuff with Barry Allen, where yeah. he does <laughs> see a woman, doesn't learn her name. Uh-huh. Do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Saves her, but yeah. then before he saves her, he like pushes her, her hair. hair. To, yeah. To it's kind of, it became <laughs> this sort of voyeuristic, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm falling in love with you. And even though we had a moment beforehand, yeah. like, you can't see me. So it's this weird, invisible touch. Not right. even though he's not being even very that. gentle, like, which was great, but. He's more powerful than her. He's, you know, using his powers to his advantage to do something that she's right. not fully aware of. And uh, it was a good it. joke. It was a good, good joke payoff. But the fact that there was a hot dog in the shot and he grabbed a wiener, <laughs> I was like, nobody flagged this. This does feel a little inappropriate. That's all we're saying. It, yeah. But then, it, but you then know, they, they, they and, go to the dog thing and then the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Queen Hippolyta runs out of that cave or out of that mm-hmm. chamber and she slides through in slow-mo. And I'm like, that looks cool. And then she gets up Baller. and she keeps going yeah. in slow-mo while rocks fall. And I'm like, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Like, let's I move needed, the pace I along. I need some urgency. There was no urgency in those very yeah. fast scenes. And, it, and it, I think on top of that, you know, yeah, and I think on top of that, you know, that scene with Iris and Barry's great, and mm-hmm. 
the ending of the movie where Flash turns back time, I'm like, this is this awesome. is where you put the big That's slow it. motion mm-hmm. moment. That's my you favorite should, part of the You moment. should have skipped so much of the stuff that you did before this mm-hmm. and just fo- because that sequence, like when that shit happened, I was yeah. insanely impressed. Like it yeah. is visually so good this is a whole mm-hmm. nother level this is someone who yeah. like really understands how to make something visually like juicy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it looked so damn good and to have Agreed. him going Agreed. through in slow motion like i was insanely impressed by that like it was really yeah. good. and that's the thing that's the thing that always makes me so bummed about sometimes talking about these movies because i think a lot of people who watch these reviews they focus on a lot of the negativity but like there's so much credit to be given for how the movie looks aside from the color palette, like not being my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. I think the cinematography is so dynamic. I love the lighting choices. Like every frame in that movie, you could screenshot and it looks really good, like really good. And I've done that a few times I've gone through and I've like screenshot some stuff and I'm like, dude, this looks like a photographer for like national geo. Like there's scenes with Aquaman in the back of the pickup truck driving Mm -hmm. off and it looks yeah. amazing. It looks like something you would find in a magazine. At the end of the day, I, I, I also saw people online, and I agree with this, mm-hmm. say that, hey, there's an actual awesome version of this movie that's in there somewhere that's maybe like three hours long. Oh, I totally yeah. agree. And I'm like, I, totally I agree, agree with that. I think yep. I kind of agree with that. Um, there's, there's some I, characters that are a little thin for me. Like, I think Wonder Woman is too yes. much of an exposition machine throughout this me entire too. movie and doesn't. Me not too. that she doesn't do stuff, but I don't think it's as impactful or important to the story other than like this is dark side, mm-hmm. like, which like, by the way, I love the backstory on dark side when it was Steppenwolf. I didn't really care because I'm like, well, you're just a pawn of dark side. So I don't really care what happens to you, but it being dark side, I was like, I'm, I'm way more invested in the cyborg really getting his due in this movie and kind of being the heart and the anchor of this movie really, really worked for me yeah. really well. And the yeah. scenes that he has with Joe yeah. Morton, having more mm-hmm. Joe Morton was awesome. Like I thought the, the it, death scene would like really worked for me and Ray Fisher's performance and like the one tier like really worked. And yeah. then there's moments with Flash that that I was really stoked about. Batman, mm-hmm. pretty good. I mean, his big motivation is like, I want to make sure that I resurrect Superman or I, I fulfill the promise. And I'm like, okay, that's a little thin. Aquaman, you know, he had a little bit of like a different role in, in this version than the theatrical. Like he's very doubtful. He's very questionable about a mm-hmm. lot of the motives and the things that they want to do. He worked mm-hmm. for me though, because he's very much like that balance of levity between all the characters. And then Superman says like three things in this movie, which that (laughs) is the only thing I will give the theatrical cut credit to is he has more dialogue, but also a lot of that dialogue like doesn't really matter. It's not, it doesn't um, mean anything. Yeah, it's tough. And I agree with that. It's interesting because like Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman are the weaker characters for me in this movie. And this franchise started with Zack Snyder doing a Superman film. Mm -hmm, And then in the next one brings in Batman and makes Superman to me a supporting character sidelined a little bit and then even Mm -hmm. further in this. And I just feel like I, I, to me, I didn't feel the love that, that these storytellers and these filmmakers had for Cyborg and Flash Mm -hmm. and even Aquaman, I guess, uh, Mm -hmm. for Superman. And the stuff he came in at the end, like, yeah, the suit looks great, but there is another part of me that's like, this is a nitpick. It's like, look, the suit looks awesome. I know that the studio mandated that it was like the normal suit and that he didn't have long hair or a beard like he did in the comic books. But at that point, I'm like, that's a weird thing to like make a concession for, but not make concessions for other stuff. Yeah. It just, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah. I guess you picked yeah. your battles and that wasn't one of them. But now when I see the black Superman suit, I'm like, why does it have a cape? I like it when it doesn't have a cape, like in the comic yeah. books. Like I thought it would have looked sick if it didn't have the cape, but he shows up at the end. And some of the same problems I had with the theatrical cut where it's like, he's resurrected and all of a sudden he's evil for no reason. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, it's just because like he's he confused. woke up from a nap and he's, he's confused. You know, yeah. That kind mm-hmm. of it's a little bit convoluted. It's a little bit forced. Some of the Superman stuff at the end is good, but not to the point where I felt for the character and was invested the way I was with Correct. Cyborg. I want to go back to Cyborg for a second. My favorite scene was where he was in the car with his mom and he was crying because his dad doesn't show up to the games. And I'm like, that's the character right there. Those are, well, that's we, an arc and that's we emotion. We yeah. Really yeah. missed that. I would have loved if there was even in this theatrical ver- or director's cut version, if there was a version where Silas Stone didn't die because I felt mm-hmm. like he's a really good character. He's really compelling. And Joe Morton's an awesome actor. And but I know the said. theatrical <laughs> cut, le- I know they had to do it. And I know that the theatrical <laughs> left him alive at the end. They did, yeah. Um, which which didn't really work in that one either. Same sort of issues. It's like not enough time spent with those characters. But like yeah. I think that it's 
it was just a bit of a bummer to also have him lose that. Par- it's it's almost like I'm not a huge fan of Jonathan Kent dying period in like the Superman story. I like the normal Superman story to be where he has Martha and Jonathan, even as he's old into Superman years. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I like that. I understand mm-hmm. that him having a heart attack is a great way to show like with all my powers, I couldn't even save him. And they do it in the film and they did it in man of steel and Superman they and did Lois. it in Smallville. Superman and Lois. They did it in Smallville yeah. after yeah. a couple seasons. Like it yeah, wasn't right seasons. off the bat. Five seasons is when it happened. So I like the idea that though, that Superman can still be an adult in living in Metropolis on the Justice League, and he has Jonathan and Martha there. The same way I like Victor Stone to have his dad around in the picture, to have that relationship and that dynamic. Maybe the other thing, too, is that like, I was fine with letting a lot of stuff go because it did feel like, okay, this is the last one, and we're not right, going to see right. a follow-up. And I'm not trying to say that to be like an asshole or anything, but as far as we know right now, there is no plans for it. So I'm mm-hmm. watching the nightmare stuff at the end, and to me it felt like <clears throat> this is Zack Snyder regrouping some actors he liked shooting a thing on his own just to be like well here's a tease of what some of my ideas would have been same thing with martian manhunter like yes i love seeing martian manhunter because i'm a comic book fan but in this film i had questions where i'm like i'm like if this if this is true then this means this like where why why where was he for the the last three movies or two movies look his his line that he says to Batman is like, like you, I've now decided that I have a stake in this world. And I'm kind of like, all right, I guess that's the explanation on paper. But again, yeah. that explanation is kind thin. of very thin. It's not good enough for me. And it's the same exact problem with why Batman switched from wanting to murder Superman to all of a sudden being like, I made a promise to him on his grave. And I'm like, you're trying to kill him. How do yeah. you go from, but it's because the story necessitated, we want to put Batman, Bruce Wayne in a position where he's the recruiter for the Justice League. Wouldn't that be interesting? It's the same thing as when they did the cartoon series, Wolverine and the X-Men, and they had Wolverine be the guy that goes around and gets the X-Men after they disbanded because they're like, when, it's not Cyclops. We yeah. all expect Cyclops to recruit. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if it was Wolverine that had to reluctantly go and collect everybody? I get it. It's the house that Superman still, built, but the house that Batman runs. Yeah, but there's still a side <laughs> of me that's I like, like I, it. I, yeah. I, I yeah. just didn't buy the connective thread from BBS to this to be like, yes, this is the same Bruce Wayne character, and I buy the decisions he made based on what happened in the last one. It just felt like too much of a, you know, well, this is why, and here's the story reason why. I mean, and even I'm at like, the end of BBS, right. they kind of hint towards that. I'm like, wait a second. I've been sitting in this theater for three hours because you've been wanting to kill this man. Yeah, where he's like, <laughs> the, and he's like, I, 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 we got We have to do right by Superman. We have to, I'm like, we have, what? To, yeah. we have to do better. And I'm like, yeah. do better. What does that mean? You were trying to kill him. Like the only reason you connected to him is yeah. because you realized that he had a mother. There's just a bunch of stuff anyway. But that's again, that's sort of judging. I guess all three of these movies is one thing, which they are. I, I agree with you that Martian Manhunter should have been just completely cut out of this movie. Just 100%. it takes away it takes away so much from that scene with Martha and Lois yes. because <laughs> you know to me it was like yeah. it's such a great scene between a mother who's lost her son and and a fiance who's lost her future husband you know right, like a future right. wife who's lost her future husband and it's a beautiful yeah. moment between the mother in law and the and the and, and the daughter and like mm-hmm. all, him walking out and turning into Swanwick and then into Martian Manhunter I'm like. Okay, well. I saw somebody online say, so does that mean he, he now goes to Martha Kent dressed up as Lois, Lois Lane? Yeah. As Lois. Have the yeah. same conversation so that next time Martha and so Lois the, meet, they're not what like, they're what are you about. talking about? Yeah. yeah. Remember yeah. when we came over to the house and we had the conversation? You came over to my apartment and we had the conversation. Yeah, what? No, I'm pretty <laughs> sure you were at my house. We had tea? What? He, I was never frustrated watching stuff going, oh, we're never going to get to see this paid off. But I was interested in things and felt like, I wonder if this is Zack Snyder purposefully, especially with that nightmare scene, trying to set stuff up to really encourage his fans to be like, hey, ask for more, ask for more. I, or if it I was like, feeling, hey, yes. here's the kitchen sink. This is what I would have done, but I'm out. Deuces. Like, this is yeah. this is my vision, yeah. I, and I, I think I crushed it. And so, I don't know. I That's have a feeling he's set up specifically that nightmare scene for there to be an outpouring of fandom so that people could say, look, this is what we could have. Let's do all of this. Yeah. I don't know if it necessarily hit that though. I, I feel like it was a, a scene that to me felt tacked on. Uh, even though like the way they shot it was really interesting. Like the things they were presenting oh. were interesting. Yeah, right? blurry, like, all, as, completely like, blurry the whole like, time. Like, well, that's that's the thing. Like it's, I'm gonna and say I know people will say like it was a nightmare. I'm like, I get it, but like there at a certain point you have to make a stylistic choice to either just like Right. I don't know. It was, was like a, a little too off for me. I think there was a me. full like Why? three seconds where the Joker was blurry after presenting yeah. that card. Right. 
So that mm-hmm. that's what I mean. After, though, like, and every, after he offered him a reach around, and I'm like, why is yeah. Bruce Wayne dreaming about the Joker? Give him a reach around. That's, I still can't get over that's this. What took me completely out of that scene. It's the, the writing yeah. was weird, but like I have a feeling that it was it was Zach saying, "Hey, look, guys, this is what we could do if you support yeah. me again, like we did for this last movie. Maybe we can make it happen." And I have a feeling mm-hmm. that he wouldn't turn down if the offer came for him to do more. But, you know, so judging judging by what, you know, WB is saying, it seems like they're moving on to, you know, other comic book pastures at this point, according to, yeah. you know, an art, a couple articles that we've read today. As far as the, uh, like, um, a three and done movies, I think this is, this is a good way to cap it off. You know, like, this is a good swung song to be like, swung. So I said swung a song, a swan song to be like, cool, this was my trilogy, let's you know let's go on and do other things because there's I, so many other projects at warner brothers in dc yeah. yeah and i agree and i mean i think like you know as a, as a director who has kind of been invested in this world for 10 years if it was me at a certain point i'd be like i want to move on i want to make new creative things and right. he i mean he has right. he's got that movie coming out army of the dead mm-hmm. coming out mm-hmm. on netflix uh in may which like i'm i'm honestly excited to see it just because i want to see like okay What's something new, original, that is 100% like your idea, your creative vision, that is not tied to any comic book, any other TV show, movie, whatever. It's like your thing. You own it. I'm excited to just sit down and be like, I don't have to think about this movie in the context of being in a bigger universe. I can just look at this movie and be like, Mm -hmm. this is Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead. What's like, what's the movie? What's the story? Who are the Mm -hmm. characters? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, you know, whatever the future holds for him as a filmmaker. If they yeah. ever were to offer him to come back and do his his uh second and third movie, I feel like it would be insanely um and to an extent creatively limiting for the people who are working on everything else. Because now it's like, well, do you have to retroactively fit in his right. sequels to match the continuity of what we're doing like Andy Muschietti's flash mm-hmm. and the Shazam movie and black Adam and all these things that still have characters that are interconnected. Wonder woman three, whatever they end up doing with Harley Quinn and suicide squad and all that stuff. Like you also do you feel not have to be bit- beholden to yeah. a, a sequel that is a sequel to a version that is not the theatrical version. And like, how is that going to confuse, you know, like I think it just right. creates too many variables. My, my yeah. final thoughts on this movie is I think it's obviously a definitely a step up from the theatrical, from the theatrical yeah. release. I think if it, if it would have ever, if I would have never seen either of these movies and I was just going in to see Zack Snyder's justice league 2017, and it was like a two and a half hour version of this movie, I probably wouldn't think that the movie is excellent, but I probably would have enjoyed it. And I think mm-hmm. a shorter theatrical cut, you know, probably would have done the movie um, more justice, pun intended, I guess. Yeah. Um, but this is the everything in the kitchen sink version of the movie. And like right. for for an assembly cut that has a beauty pass on it, like it's good. Like it's good mm-hmm. enough mm-hmm. that. I would watch it again, you know, and despite my gripes with story stuff and some of the some of the finer details of character work and some of the arcs and really not feeling like some of the characters necessarily have an arc that is enough for me to be invested in. I still, like I said on Twitter, I liked some of the heroic moments that a lot of the characters get. I liked the ending with Cyborg and the Flash really being the ones responsible for stopping the invasion and all that stuff. So like, there's a lot of those elements that I really enjoy. And I just honestly really just like the fact that there was consistency visually. This prob- probably is my favorite of the three films, definitely more so than BVS. And it also for me out of the three, at least felt the most like optimistic and hopeful, which I appreciated. And for the people who keep saying that, uh, you know, they, they feel like the frame of the movies cut off. That's just the way it was shot. You're seeing the whole frame. You're seeing more than you saw in the theatrical version. Yeah. It's a taller frame. It's film. It's shot on film. It's a whole different process, but you're seeing the whole thing. I personally didn't mind that it was in four by three. Uh, it didn't, re- it didn't take me out of the movie. It didn't bother me. I kind of just didn't, but I'm also somebody who like loves change, like variance and aspect ratios. So for me, like didn't bother me at all. I thought it was totally fine. Yeah. Uh, same final thoughts, man. Same everything you just said. Same, Augustine. <laughs> uh, yeah, the three, movie's two, good. One, same. <laughs> three, two, one, same. Movie's good. Uh, if this movie was not for me, uh, but the movie was still good. So yeah, if you're if you're you know a, a Snyder fan, you're gonna love this. And for other people, maybe not their cup of tea. But uh, we just yeah. watched some interesting moments in cinematic history. That's for sure. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be nice to each other. Be respectful. 
love each other. You won't, but it's fine. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye.